Hi, Dan here. I'm going to show you how to create this basic animation of a tree moving in the wind uh, with Blender 2.8 and rendered with the EV engine. Let's start with an overview of the scene. Here is our tree, how it looks like without any uh, particular shading. It's made of two main groups of objects. One is the leaves and one is the trunk with uh, all the branches, which are actually uh, generated by an add-on. I'm going to show you later how to create this tree. Other objects in the scene are a ground, a background, which are these two objects here, ground and background. Let me show you this. So ground is this plane and the background is this sphere. The whole world background is green and is this. Why didn't I use directly a background which is black? Because if I activate Eevee, I see a black background. And the reason is simple. If I choose a black background, all of my shadows are going to be black. Instead, I wanted the background which would give me some green night light, but I also wanted the real background of the image to be completely black. So my sphere here, the, the fake background, it's actually this one, it's an emission surface with the black color, so it doesn't reflect or it doesn't show in the scene, as well as the ground is the same material. But if I remove the background, so the sphere that I used as a background, you can see the green world background, which I didn't want to uh, see. It's an interesting color and you can do a lot of interesting composition, but I didn't want it in my image. So I thought to show you something extra for this tutorial. Also, we have the moon, which is actually just a sphere very close to the tree, but uh, sized as a big moon. And then we have the sun, which is our real light in the scene. So if I remove the moon, you can see that nothing changes in the scene. And if I have only the moon and I remove the sun, everything turns black, or I would say green, which means you are seeing this color here. So the real light in the scene is this directional light, which is coming roughly from the direction of the moon towards the tree. Remember that the sun and the moon, they emit some sort of directional light. So this moon here has a material that it's called emission, but I only use in this not to illuminate the scene, but to have this kind of glow and to look like in a video. So usually you don't see the detail of the moon when you are trying to expose the main object, but that's totally a different story. So maybe another tutorial for that. Let's go and see what kind of shaders I use for these uh, two objects, the leaves and the tree. Let me hide the leaves so you can see only these uh, objects here. Let's activate the shader editor and you can see now, activate EV, that my material is nothing too fancy. It's a very simple a Musgrave texture here. These are the value I used. The color goes into a color ramp as the color of the Musgrave texture. It's black and white. I'll show you in a moment. This would be the color of the texture. I like the pattern, but I don't like the color. So I put the color channel into a color ramp and then the color ramp, which is made of these two color that I selected. You can do whatever color you like. The color channel goes into the base color of my principal shader. The roughness, it's quite high because it's quite dry, but if you decrease, you can see some shiny part. And this depends on the look you want to give to your bark. If it's wet, if it's a very shiny tree compared to a more dry ones. Here we have the glow. We, here we have the bloom activated and we, are, we see this kind of reflection, some very 
interesting effects. Let me deactivate it. Also, we have a bump map that it's the same texture into the high channel of a bump node and with the, this kind of uh, low strength as it's just a bark is nothing too big and then it goes into the normal channel. That's all for this tree. I didn't need a lot of detail because it's quite distant in the scene and I didn't need to see every single detail, just needed some kind of texture to it. And the same idea is with the leaves. The leaves are okay from a distance, uh, the color is pretty uniform, there is some pattern which is given mainly by the texture, which is a different kind of texture. It's always Musgrave by using the multifractal algorithm and using the same bump map. Again, here you can play and having the leaves a bit less or more shiny, depending on where they're facing. You can see the glossy or the roughness. Also, of course, you can decide to have them in different color depending on the position of the tree. This is probably for a more advanced tutorial where you can set, for example, the leaves on the top to be yellow and the bottom to be uh, more green or having random color assigned to them. You can select different parts of the tree's uh, leaves and change them, assigning different material. The interesting part of having these two parts of the tree separately is that you can quickly change the look of the tree drastically and having like a dramatic season change, for example. Uh, let's go with a yellow look, for example, here. Or if you want to mimic uh, one of the most beautiful maple, I think it's a Japanese maple, we can go uh, with the red foliage, which is very, very beautiful. It's a bit stronger. And we can change the tree to something brighter. But let's see how to create the model of the tree and the leaves. The first thing we're gonna do it's enable a standard add-on that comes with uh, 2.8. You're gonna search for the add-on called Sapling Tree Generator and enable it. I have it already enabled it and then save the preferences if you want to keep it enabled for the next time you start Blender. And I suggest to check where this add-on is gonna be. Every time you enable an add-on, just check. Uh, this one is gonna be in View 3D Add Curve. So let me remove all the objects we are not going to use for this tutorial and let's go to Add, Curve, Sapling Tree Generator. This is the default tree that comes with the add-on. You want to open the settings and you can first of all browse through a number of settings. There are different trees, all can be edited small pine, willow, uh, we have birch, fir, but what I'm going to show you is the Japanese. So this was my starting point. I'm not going through all individual settings, but I'm going to show you some of them. They are very intuitive, so you can just play with them. Branch radius, you can create something interesting and something that looks more like a coral than a tree. But let's go to something more realistic. Uh, and then you can change, for example, the radius of the bevel, and you can change the root flare, which is what it sounds like. It's the, basically the foot of the tree and then the branch splitting. Now, as you can see here, start with one and then split in three. I think mine was actually only one. So let's reduce the splitting to one for this base. So it goes up as one and then start 
separating and then keep separating. Now, when you create leaves, the leaves are gonna be only on the top of each single branch. You have to keep in mind that one thing is the separation of the tree, of the main tree, of the trunk, and another thing is the branching, which is defined through this. The more you add, the more branches and leaves you get. Here again, a lot of different parameters that can be defined that decide how the branches forms and spread and how, for example, the branches are more outwards or inwards the tree. You can have random actually branching to have every tree with different settings. Uh, again, the curve resolution, I would keep it not too high, but not too low either. And then there is the branch growth that define the length of each branch, the variation between two different branches, how are oriented these branches, this kind of a dead tree. The next settings that we're going to explore is the leaves. It's very simple how it works. You click on show leaves and it will show will create a leaf or a group of leaves at the end of each branch. Each leaf is composed by five parts that are hexagonal part. You can have also rectangular part in case you want to map in, on, on each leaf uh, an image, for example. You can play with the number of segments that compose uh, the leaf. You can have, of course, even less. You can have even only two or one. You can play with the dimension and you can play with the scale of each single part, for example, to achieve more round candle kind of leaf. This one looks uh, like a Acer probably. Once you're happy with the look of your tree, you can go to Armature. Armature creates basically a skeleton that is going to animate your tree. Moving to the animation settings, you can animate the armature or you can animate the whole object. Now, if you click on fast preview, you will only see the armature moving, which is very fast. I'm hitting spacebar to play and stop the animation. You can play the when animation speed, you can have a loop. Let's set a loop of 250 so it will go in loop it's very windy you can of course have less wind or even a shorter loop for example and then you can have more gusts and you can have a stiffer tree or you can have a very um, more flexible tree once you're finished with the animation you can uh, disable fast preview and your animation is basically ready. Uh, be careful when playing the animation with the old tree because it may be very, very heavy on the system. In fact, I cannot play that in real time uh, when the geometry is activated. Um, if I hide the geometry and leaves and keep the skeleton, it's a bit faster, but still it's not an easy preview. It's a very uh, complex animation. Another way you can create uh, leaves with the same plugin is adding your own geometry and you can create at this point any kind of geometry and you can create trees from different planet or with a cartoon uh, look. Uh, let's create this as our leaf and assign quickly a material. Let's say an emission material, it's gonna be in red. Okay, this is gonna be our leaf. And then we add again our tree or a different tree. Yeah, we go with this tree with less separation. Okay. 
but with a slightly fatter body. And then we go to the leaves setting and we decide that this time we're gonna use dupli birds and our object is the icosphere, you can name it as, uh, as you want, it's the one we just created. And we click show leaves and that's done. These settings are not active when you select a dupli verts, so these are only active when you have the hexagonal shape of the leaves. I'd say that my leaves are way too tiny for this tree, so I'll go back to my ecosphere, I'll select my ecosphere, and I change the size of it. And then I'm going to add the modifier and do a wireframe modifier, much tighter, much thinner. I'm going to assign a going to assign to the tree material too, something darker. to activate ambient occlusion and bloom, reducing the radius of the bloom and also reducing the thickness of our leaves and at this point I only need to change the background to something darker. And here we have our fantasy tree or geometry or alien or old school kind of graphics, vectors graphics, or a mix of different kind of technique. So if you have any question about this add-on or about my tutorial, please leave a comment below. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel and ciao.